evening, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Coal UTV for another midweek show. Uh, firstly, before we talk about some new signings, we're going to be chatting to uh, some new signings this week. As you can see, one of them with me now. But firstly, did you catch Robbie Cowling last Thursday evening with Glenn Pennyfather talking about supporters being able to pick their individual seats for games again, a payment plan for season tickets and a return of the Legends Bar for matches here at the Job Serve Community Stadium. Do keep an eye out on our website for all the details over the coming months ahead of next season. Now, as you can see with me now here in the studio is one of our new signings, Al Amin Kazim. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. And most importantly, congratulations. Thank uh, you very much. How, how does it feel? And especially to get it done this early in the summer from your point of view. Uh, it was amazing. Just I'm um, glad to know where I'm at and where like the club appreciates me enough to sign me again and ready for the new season. Uh, and you've been here, bit, been at the club for four years now. Yeah. Uh, how have you enjoyed that and your development as a player? Um, I've actually really enjoyed it and it's kind of surreal being able to stay at the club that you've been at for so long and to be able to represent them in you know, different games. Just happy. Now, you got yourself on the bench. Uh, I can see by the smile how much it means to you. Uh, going up to Hartlepool on the last game of the season, plus a night away uh, with the first team. When you first got the, the call, the nod that you was going to be involved, how did you feel and, and how did that come? Who, who called you? Um, it was Dave Hussey, actually, who called me and told me. Because um, I trained with them the day before they travelled and obviously you kinda, you're kind of like hoping to play with them but it's not necessarily a um, like guaranteed thing but then when he told me I was so happy he called my parents and like oh my god I'm travelling nah. no, so it was um, quite surreal and what did your parents say over the moon yeah they were so excited but they are like like, don't get too excited because you don't know if you'll come on yet but just enjoy the experience which I did it's interesting you say that you know your parents trying to keep you grounded I remember speaking to Junior earlier in the season saying a very similar thing his parents are uh, a big part of um, keeping him grounded and keeping him, you know, in the right mindset. Yeah. Uh, similar for yourself, I guess. Yeah, very similar. Very similar. Um, during footballers' careers, all have highs and all have lows. You've experienced, you know, both days, those at, at a young age, you know, being being just 20. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the injury that you picked up, that you've come through and come out the other side of? Um, did my ACL meniscus injury, which took about... 13 months to play again um it wasn't the thing like when i did it i didn't expect it to be such a major injury i thought it was maybe like something like I, I could come back from like three months four months which is like okay but to be told that you're going to be missing a whole season or just not playing football again it's one of the worst experiences i think a footballer or an athlete can have in one sport and getting through that um not just from your professional point of view, your footballing point of view, but also, you know, outside of that, your friends and your family doing stuff and you simply can't do that. And the not knowing of whether you're going to come back from it and, and continue your career. Yeah, it's a bit, it's, I wouldn't really like to say the word, but it is very scary. Yeah. Especially as you go up and see like all your friends going to uni, going to parties, enjoying life. Whereas you, you can't really have the luxury of doing all those things like going on a night out or enjoying yourself too much because obviously you have a responsibility to yourself and your club because you, you want to get back, you want to play, you want to be the best version of a, of a footballer or not necessarily even football but another sports like an athlete. You want to be the best version of yourself and like to just show the world of what you can do. So it's a bit conflicting but... At the end of the day, you know yourself, you know what you want to achieve in the future. So, You've so. speak some very wise words for, for such a young lad, I, I must say. Um, and you had to be patient, of course. Uh, you did come through that and you're back playing and a testament that the trip to Hartlepool um, where, where you uh, went up with the first things we just spoke about. And also the FA Cup run with Malden. Tell us uh, a little about that. Um, it was amazing, I think, how like Wayne Brown kind of inspired us all because... It's not something for like a club that not necessarily low, but to to just go on and just 
face teams without any fear, just to be able to impose ourselves on the other team to play how we want to play, is very like inspiring. And I think just that team and how we we stuck together even through the highs and the lows is just amazing. And I have to say, like going back to the last question, from going from such a high high in my career to then going to such a low like low, it's really I think it kind of trains the mind into knowing like yes you can experience amazing things but you can also experience the worst of the worst like anything can happen in football really or yeah. in sports but i feel like when you can understand that you can play without any fear you can just you know that yes i can i can i can do amazing things but i can also be rubbish but at the end of the day there's another game there's another season you know what i'm saying like you can just keep going back at it and just however because you know the saying is um if the what if the world knocks you down, it's not about how hard you get hit; it's about how many times you keep getting up. You know what I'm saying so. It's just you've learned a lot through that injury, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, just I've, from I've, listening to you about not just football but life in general has really sort of made you think about things in, in a, such a positive way. Yeah. Um, I uh, was talking to uh, Billy and Jake, uh, and they play golf. Um, and also we're going to be chatting to them. On the show, I'll be asking him similar questions as well. Uh, do you play any golf with them? Unfortunately, not. But I've tried to show them my form, and it's awful. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to who's the best out of them too at some point. Uh, so, what's your ambitions for this season and maybe going forwards? I know that's a, a very open-ended question, but um, honestly, I just want to get in that first team squad and feature regularly, and be able to impose myself on the team and show the manager and show the players, the fans that this is me and this is what I can like, bring to the club and to the team. Al, you're an absolute credit um, to the club, to your family and to yourself, most importantly, and wish you all the best, not just for now, but in the future for the rest of your career. Thank you very much. Um, we'll be back shortly with Jake, uh, Jake Hutchinson, and I will be asking him about his golf as well. Back shortly. So as you can see with me now it is Jake Hutchinson. Jake, thank you for joining us here in the studio. Firstly, how did it feel to put pen to paper finally? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Um, obviously been here for my fourth season now. So two years after my scholarship, I had a two year pro and then to get a new contract in another two years is obviously, um, yeah, just buzzing to get signed and be here for another two years, hopefully push on even more. I guess doing it so early, early either, you know, early in the season, it gives you time to relax a bit more throughout the summer without the added pressure of thinking, am I, aren't I, you know, where, where's my career going at the moment? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just um, to be offered it before that, like, a few weeks before the end of the season, obviously now put it pen to paper, it was just nice to be able to get it sorted and not have to worry about where I'm going next and think about trials and possibly not even going to another football league club. So I, I think the main thing is just to like sort of keep it at the club and be set for another two years. Uh, and you, you've been out on loan uh, a few different times. Uh, do you think that's helping you develop because you're getting game time constant as opposed to maybe being part quite early of a first team set up but not getting um, match time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think always every year I've been here actually of been out on loan to a different level of football. Um, so I think it's just a massive like opportunity to always go out and play men's football and get the chances to play. Because I think, uh, personally for me, I found it more beneficial than playing for the 23s where you don't really know if you're gonna be playing every week just because you never know what's gonna come back from the first team or up from the under 18s. There's always people pushing for places, but if you can go out, into men's football and cement a place in that team, it's always beneficial. Uh, and it's physical at, yeah. at that level, isn't it? So that sort of gets you used to, uh, yeah. gets you ready for the, the, the first team, hopefully. Yeah, yeah hopefully. That's, that's the aim, that's the whole point of going out for the men's football and to get you physically ready for what you will see in League Two, definitely. And as a striker, you scored some goals. Uh, you scored a hat-trick uh, towards the end of... Uh, uh, last year, not yeah. last season, last year. Tell us about that and who that was for. Yeah, yeah. So I've, um, it was actually my first game for Hitchin. I've been there, I went there a couple of seasons ago on loan as a scholar in my scholarship. And um, to go back there and first game back, a bit of pressure to 
score goals really because they were near the bottom of the league. Um, to come in and score a hat trick in my first game, it was just the perfect start really to then build on and follow on for the rest of the season. Banged in a hat trick, great, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, also, over the summer, I believe you've got your your own uh, fitness schedule uh, yeah. to do. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that, and uh, obviously you're focused on it. And how does that work? Do you get any downtime as well throughout the summer? Yeah, so we got um, our sports scientist sent through a schedule. We basically said to first couple of weeks have a bit of downtime. Really, don't even do anything. Um, just that's where you probably get your holidays and a bit of time to go and play any other things you like playing, like golf or something like that. Um, and then after the first two weeks, it's pretty much go and hit this schedule hard where it's running, gym stuff, football, just all, all sort of things to get you back fit to really hit pre-season running. Um, last couple of questions, a bit about yourself. You said, you said mentioned golf there. So uh, any hobbies outside football, of course? Yeah, yeah. So I um, really got into my golf um, a couple of seasons ago, really. Just a few of the boys play football, so we got into it and... They've just been playing whenever the weather's nice, really, is the time to get out. And it's a bit of, it's good to have a bit of downtime away from football and not really think about football. There's a bit of time to just clear your mind. Yeah, I think that's really important. Maybe we'll have to have a, have a knock at some point. Yeah. Or maybe I'll caddy. Yeah. I'll probably <laughs> caddy. Uh, and also, uh, as a young player, as you're coming through, who's been the player? I always like to ask young people this. Who's the players that you've looked up to or you've maybe try to model yourself on or just take a, a little bit from maybe players that are currently playing somewhere or previously? Yeah, so um, I think a big one, there's always been a few people have actually likened me to him, uh, not obviously the level he's on, but Harry Kane has been a big influence because the amount of goals he scores is just phenomenal. And also the other bits of the play where he drops a bit deeper to link up play and get his assists as well as goals is... Um, I think if you can play up front and get assists and goals, it's always a bonus and you're not going to be left that many teams if you're getting goals and assists. Well, I'll tell you what, I hope you beat Harry Kane's record. Yeah. That'd be great to see you in a few years' time. Jake, thanks for taking the time out uh, to come in and join us. Um, and good luck. Good luck Cheers. with everything, not just now, but in the future uh, and the rest of your career. Thanks again thanks, for uh, Jake coming in. And we'll be back very shortly with another signing. Welcome back. We're joined in the studio, as you can see, by Billy Cracknell, another signing. Billy, thanks for taking the time out to come in and join us. Uh, same question as we're, we're asking all, all the young players. How did it feel to uh, get the signing done this early? Yeah, and no, I was delighted. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to be offered a new deal coming into the season. Um, they told me all along that I won't get a new deal because obviously I went out online to Concord and struggled. Um, and I come back, play 23s, and then I went out on loan to Bishop Stortford, and I thought I kicked on there, and uh, did quite well, got into the playoffs, and then it's like the last game of the season, they offered me a new deal, so I was delighted. Yeah, and you've been here for a, a, a number of years now, under 14s, I, I think, um, and so to get this far in your career, and then it must have been, I don't know, from a personal point of view, you know, you're thinking about your career. You've been here for that period of time. You want to continue. And so the, the not knowing sometimes must have been, uh, you know, not a very nice situation to be in. No, it wasn't. But I suppose all I can do is do my best. So I just I just kept believing, kept believing. And finally, got the new yeah. deal, which I was delighted with, yeah. And you played in some pre-season games for last season. How did you find that? Yeah, it was definitely a step up. Obviously, the intensity is a lot, like a lot more. It's a lot quicker. But I thought I coped quite well. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to do the same this preseason. Hopefully. And is that what you noticed more about it than anything else? A step up that the pace of the game or the, the the strength of some of the players may be, or yeah, more the pace. It's just a much quicker tempo, I think, compared to what I'm used to. And I've got since twenty threes and going out online to Stortford's level. Yeah, so that's the big difference. Uh, and um, also, you made your debut against Carlisle uh, last year uh, uh, in a two-one win. When you first got the the nod that you was going to be in the you know around the first team, how did that feel? Well, I think I was with them for the last like past few weeks before I actually come on, and um, I was on the bench, obviously like hoping to get on. 
Um, but yeah, when the gaffer called me over and told me I was going on, obviously I was nervous, but yeah, I couldn't wait to get one. Would you? you no, know, I can imagine yeah, you I was. Yeah, I was nervous, yeah. But... And what was you thinking? What do you think? Like, um, as a, you know, you're a professional player, you come on, do you think him right? Just do the simple things. Don't make any mistakes or, well, because it's, it's a big moment in, in, in a, a young player's career. I think we was two and one up at the time and obviously I didn't want to come on and then concede. <laughs> and I think I got chucked on in the centre mid as well, which obviously I'm not used to. Um, but no, I was just trying to yeah, just, just put it in the channels and like, hook it on. But I don't think I even touched the ball, to be honest. <laughs> but we got the job done. It yeah, got the job done. Um, frustrating. We've got some uh, uh, some experienced central defenders, centre halves in there with Eastie, uh, Tommy Smith, Chambers, Dallison. Have you learnt from them this year? Uh, and you know, not being able to necessarily break through, but with you with those players there, and you know their experience, that still gives you heart, and you can sort of suck some information off them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, I haven't played any games for the first thing this season, but training with them every now and then. Obviously, you pick up little bits. They've got loads of experience. So, obviously, you're learning new things, playing with them. So, it's really good. Uh, and last couple of questions. I always like to uh, get an insight into uh, some younger players. What's the, the players you've looked up to in the past or you modelled yourself on? Maybe not necessarily playing now, or maybe they are playing now. Growing up, when I was younger, I was always a centre mid. Um, so, I used to look at players like Gerard Lampard, really. They are probably my idols growing up. Yeah. And then later on, it's probably, as I've like, formed into a centre-back, I'd say John Stones. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, and uh, finally, hobbies. But I believe you're a bit of a golfer. I am, yeah. I'm all over golf. Oh, so. uh, uh, yeah. When did you start? When did you take golf? What um, made you take golf up? It was COVID and a couple of my mates were playing golf and they asked me to come over one day. And I was, I was a shambles when I thought <laughs> but, um, but I've come on a bit, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you play with Jake, I believe he tells us. Yeah, Hot Joe. Me and him have got a membership. Um, oh, oh, excellent. Not far away from the training ground, so we go there pretty much every day when we can. Who's the best? Do you know what? It's close, but I've got to give it to myself. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, well, look, uh, thanks for coming in, Billy. Really do appreciate you taking your time. Good luck with, um, not just season, but the, the whole career that you've got in front of you, and I'm sure you go far. Thank you thanks very much. For coming in. Uh, we'll be back very shortly with another sign-in. Welcome back to the show. And as you can see, joining me now is Lord and Akambiri or Lord and first of all, first and foremost, congratulations Thank on you. signing. How does it feel? Feels very good. Uh, you know, been there for a while. See, happy to finally sign my first pro deal. See how the season goes. And again, I've asked um, the lads this. Is it good to get it done this early? You know where you are for the summer uh, and you can sort of get your mind ready for next season and, and where you want to be and what you want to kind of achieve. Yeah, I think it's, it's good that we've known early so we know what we need to work on prior to coming back for next season. Just work on them things and obviously push to what we want to achieve. And what sort of things do you work on in your game? Is there any bits that you say right, this summer, I really want to work on this. I want to improve this. Or is it a whole round game or any specific bits? I really say more off the ball and off the ball stuff, tactical. Work on that, my position more, that art around it, not just the defensive, uh, tackling, running back, running the ball, oh, all that other side of the game. So it's more like reading the game yeah, as well. Really when, you're, when you're off the ball, seeing where it's going, where it might go, and watching players, stuff like that. Yeah, literally that. Oh, quite interesting. Um, at Colchester, uh, spoke to Billy uh, um, uh, and Jake and seeing players that have come through the academy, they made it into the first team and some have gone on to play at a higher level. Does that a must give you a lot of confidence in the academy and that there is a pathway for yourself to play first team football? Yeah, I feel like it puts us at ease because we've seen players that we've been playing up with, growing up with from young, pushing on to first team making a lot of appearances and only shows that we could do it as well. Just follow their footsteps, do the same, work as hard as them. And you've worked with Wayne at Malden. So now he's he's got the full-time job here that's been announced. So is it good to have him at this level with you as well? Yeah, worked with Wayne last season. Almost quite a lot of last season before we came to Colchester. And we had a decent relationship there. Helped with a lot of my game because my first season in non-league football, men's football. 
and obviously he's pushed on to come here so obviously it makes me feel better that he knows me as a player already hopefully this season we can continue working together yeah well and, and keep developing your game as yeah. well I, I, I guess uh, any particular people that you've modelled yourself on again I've, I've asked the lads this modelled yourself on or any players past present that you used to watch and think wow they're brilliant this player, I don't really pay attention to that Drogba. You see, like Drogba is aggression, how he used to fight, want to win everything. But a player in my position that I probably look up to the most is someone like Walker. Like um, how he's quick, runs back, very good defensively. Can like carry the team forward with like, his pace with the ball. And when, so and when you watch someone like Drogba, you've just mentioned, he's obviously as a, as a forward. Do, do you ever watch that and think to yourself, if I was marking him, how would I do that? What would I do that? Or how would I try and stop him? Do, do you ever ever look at anything that way? Yeah, of course. Like I think, oh, well, dad in that situation, like, drug was elite. That like, probably just in the situations, see how I could deal with him then. But to say to look at him and try base it off not being in a situation, yeah. I say is hard because he's a very good player. But uh, yeah, it's good to try and learn off the best, isn't yeah, it? So, yeah. to speak. Uh, so what's your ambitions for, for the coming season? Um, where would you like to, sort of, the end of the season, what would you have liked to have achieved? Hopefully maybe a couple of appearances with the first team, get more experience with the first team, just try to do the best that I can, whether it's 23 years or first team, or learn. Absolutely, mate. What a great way to leave it. Lord and... Good luck, as I always say, not just this season, but for the rest of your career. I'm sure you've got a fantastic one ahead of you, and good luck with it, mate. Thank you very much. We'll be back very shortly with another signing. Now, last but certainly not least, we've got Donnell Thomas in the studio with us. Uh, welcome to the show, Donnell. Thank you for taking the time out to, to come in and join us. Firstly, congratulations. Uh, and uh, how does it feel? And the fact that you've got this done and signed so early in the summer. Um, it's a very proud moment for me and my family, especially to get a two-year deal as well. Um, just very pleased. Yeah. Well, it shows the hard work you put in. And it's interesting, you know, you say about mentioning your family straight away. Uh, obviously a big part of uh, your career uh, as well in, in supporting you and trying to get you to make right decisions at the right times in your career. Yeah, of course. Um, family are very supportive. Um, they've always been there uh, from the start, really. And they're always um, trying to make me better and help me do the right things. Uh, so. And you learn from their experience, I guess, you know, in life in general. You've been in and around the first team squad um, on numerous times. Did that give you the confidence to think, well, I know I'm... I'm going to get the deal, or was you still, you know, the, the anticipation of the not knowing? Because football can be such a difficult yeah, career. Yeah, um, I was in around, but I wasn't really like playing games, or so I didn't really know if I would get the deal. So yeah, I'm still surprised. But you, you, um, you was in a pre-season friendlies. You was part of that, and then you did go back to the under twenty threes. Was that a case of thinking to yourself, well, look, I'm, I'm. Still a young player, I've got to be patient. Yeah, yeah that was the case. Um, for me, it was all about just getting game time and just playing games and showing what I can do on the pitch. And I've got to ask you about Forest Green. Yeah. Uh, you was part uh, of that and it was live on Sky, uh, your debut. How was that? How did you get the call? Who gave you the call? And, and how did you and your family react to that? Um, Dave gave me the call and told me I was in the squad. And it was just like, everything just felt surreal. Um, in front of the fans, full stadium on Sky Sports. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's great to see you smile when you say that. Was you nervous? Did you feel nervous? Did you or not think about it too much? And, and when you was going on, what was in, in your mind? Um, I wasn't nervous at first, but as I'm warming up, when Dave's gone, then I'll come. That's when it started. I started getting a bit nervous. But when I got on the pitch, it was just when I went. And then that was it, you forgot all about it. And it's great to see we've got so many um, young people that have come in through the academy. I've, I've asked the other lads this, that have come through the academy, gone to play first team football and, you know, even gone on to play at a high level. It must give you a lot of confidence, not just in yourself, but also being at Colchester. Yeah, I think um, there's a great future here for me. If I do do the right things and perform, then I could go on to do great things. And uh, what any ambitions have you set yourself any goals, or do you not? Or if you do set yourself any goals, how far in front uh, do you do you do that? 
Um, I've set myself a goal. Yeah, um, I want to be able to get my start, start starting for the team. Um, probably get about. My goal is to get about ten starts. Really well. I'll tell you what. Keep doing. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm sure you will. Thanks for coming and joining us. Good luck, not just for this season, but for the rest of your career, of course. Um, so we've had a chat to Billy, Lord and Jake, Al, uh, and of course, Donnell, and thank them all for coming in today. And I'm sure you will wish them all well with their careers here at Colchester and if they further on, of course. Uh, the Academy has really started to show the good work it's doing over uh, the last few years or so. And I think everybody involved at Colchester United, fans, club, staff, players, everybody should be very, very proud of that. I know it's thought of very highly within the footballing world. Well, look, that's about it for today. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back very, very soon with some more news, some more signings maybe. But until then, uh, take care and it's goodbye for now.